Chandra curse is a harrowing experience that can profoundly impact every aspect of a person's life. Curses are believed to be negative spiritual forces that can bring about misfortune, suffering, and destruction. They are often thought to be the result of malevolent intentions, ancestral sins, or spiritual disobedience. The effects of a curse can be devastating, affecting not only the cursed individual, but also their loved ones and communities. Perhaps the most insidious aspect of a curse is its persistence. Unless lifted, a curse can linger for generations, continuing to wreak havoc on descendants long after its initial cast. This perpetual nature of curses underscores the importance of seeking spiritual intervention and divine protection. Therefore, understanding the signs of being under a curse and taking proactive steps to break its hold are crucial for anyone facing such spiritual oppression. Without intervention, the dangers of a curse can be dire, leading to a life plagued by suffering and despair. Gloria, I need to talk to you. What's wrong, Victor? You look upset. Upset? Upset doesn't even begin to cover it. Ever since I proposed to you, everything has gone downhill. What do you mean? What happened? What hasn't happened, Gloria? My car, my pride and joy, burned to a crisp last week. I barely escaped with my life. And then, the roof of my house. The house I was planning to make a home, got blown off in that storm. I don't even know how I'm going to fix it. Oh my goodness, David, I had no idea. I'm so sorry. This isn't just about your apology. The contract awarded to me has been withdrawn from me and it was given to someone who doesn't have enough experience as I am. Things are going bad for me. Gloria. What's wrong with you? Is it your chest again? Yes, the pain has resurfaced. Oh my. Anyways, I am sorry about that. But, I need to tell you the truth Gloria. Which is? Wait. Are you accusing me of being the one behind all the recent happenings in your life? Are you calling me a witch? Are you accusing me? Gloria, the truth is that all these happen immediately I proposed to you last week. I have lost so much within few days. I had to go for prayers, and I was told you have been cursed and anyone that relates with you will partake in the curse. I got scared. Gloria, I am sorry, but I have to withdraw my engagement to you. We can't get married. I'm sorry, but please do not call me again and do not come to my house. If you go against my instructions, I'll have you arrested. Take care of yourself. Victor. Just like that. You can't do this to me. I'm leaving. Why me? When I thought I have found a man that will be my husband forever. When I thought I'll be happy, little did I know that I was only deceiving myself. But, does Victor really mean this? Is he going to dump me for real? This is not fair. Ah. Uh, who is calling me? Doctor. Doctor is calling me. Doctor. Where is my mother? What happened to her? I am afraid, but we need to commence the surgery now if we don't want to lose her. Surgery? Now? The money is expensive, Doctor. What do you want me to do now? It is just 50,000, Miss Gloria. I am sure your mom's life is worth than that. Doctor, I have 15. Zero, zero, zero here with me. I have just been paid at work. I'll borrow money from my friends. Please, commence the money. Commence the money? I meant, commence the surgery. I'm sorry, but you have to make full deposit. Do not worry, she's currently on life support. Go now to look for the money. I beg you, doctor. Nothing must happen to my mother. She's the only one I have left. You know I told you that I lost my dad to this sickness two years ago. Please, I beg you. She won't die. We won't lose her.
I am glad you came here all by yourself. Sir, please, I need a loan from this company. My mom's slap depends on this. Please, loan me, sir. This shouldn't be coming from you, Gloria. Do you know how much this company has lost because of you? You are nothing but a misfortune and a sub back to us here. Did you get your salary? Yes, I did. We added 5,000 to say bye to the misfortune you've brought to this company. Your services are no longer needed here, Gloria. Please, pick your letter up at the reception. You can't do this to me, sir. It was just a one-time mistake. I need my job at this time. It was just a mistake. One-time mistake, you say? You've made the same mistake over ten times. We have lost deals and good clients because of you. Your sight alone irritates them. They do not want to patronize us because of you. We have lost potential customers. Gloria, you are cursed. Leave my office. What is happening to me? So many bad things have been happening to me and my family. Where do I get this money now? Let me go to Jade's house. Why are you knocking on my door like that? What do you want from me? I am so sorry Alex. You know you are my only friend and I have nowhere to turn to. My mom needs 30,000 for an immediate surgery. Please, I need you to loan me. I'll pay back as soon as possible. I am so sorry about your mom Gloria, but I don't have any need to loan you. You haven't paid me the 10,000 and 5,000 you loaned from me for over 6 months now. Where do you want me to get 30,000 from? I am sorry. I can't help you. But, I wish your mom quick recovery. Say me hi to her, bye. Alex, are you angry? I am happy. Won't you even offer me food to eat? I am really hungry. The food you prepared with your money right? Please. Leave my house and go away with your misfortune. Did you just say that to me? You better see the doctor with this your constant chest pain. Please, take your leave. Say me hi to your mom. When you are done eating your nails, please leave my house. This is too much. Miss Gloria, where have you been since? We have been trying to reach you, but you haven't been picking our calls. I am sorry, doctor. I was scared to pick your calls. I haven't gotten the money. Oh. Where is my mom, doctor? How is she feeling now? Is she awake? I'm sorry, Miss Gloria. Sorry about what? Doctor. Please talk. Talk to me, doctor. We lost her. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh, ah. Uh, ah. Uh. We're sorry about this. We tried our best, but she didn't make it. Mom. Why did you have to leave me? Everything is falling apart, and I don't know how to fix it. Alex said I'm cursed. That misfortune follows me everywhere. And even my former boss, he, he hinted at it too. And now Victor, he left me when I needed him the most. Said he couldn't handle my problems anymore. The bills are piling up, and I can barely make ends meet. Everywhere I turn, I'm met with rejection. From the ones I love, from the ones I trust. Am I cursed? Is that why all this is happening to me? Have I been abandoned by God, cursed to live a life of pain and suffering? Please, God. Please tell me this isn't my fate. Please show me that there's still hope. That I'm not cursed and forsaken. Please. Young lady, 
What were you doing there all by yourself? I am tired of life. I want to kill myself. I am useless. I decided to come to church and ask God some questions, and afterwards I'll kill myself. But, he hasn't been answering me. Hopefully, you can answer my question. Sister, suicide is not an option for you. Jesus loves you. Am I cursed? Can you let me know the signs that one is being cursed? Everyone keeps saying I am cursed. I want to know what they saw in me that made them say that. Let's sit down to discuss. 1. Nothing works in your life. One of the most distressing signs that you might be under a curse is the persistent failure and stagnation in every area of your life. This is not just an occasional setback or bad luck, but a chronic condition where no matter what you touch or how diligently you work, the outcomes are always negative. Deuteronomy 28, 20-22 provides a vivid depiction of the consequences of a curse. The Lord will send on you curses, confusion, and rebuke in everything you put your hand to, until you are destroyed and come to sudden ruin because of the evil you have done in forsaking him. The Lord will plague you with diseases until he has destroyed you from the land you are entering to possess. This passage highlights how a curse can manifest as failure and ruin in every endeavor. It speaks to the reality that when under a curse, even the most well-planned and executed efforts will come to naught. Imagine having the Midas touch in reverse, where everything you engage in turns into a disaster instead of gold. This can be incredibly demoralizing, especially when you see others around you succeeding with far less effort. Higai 1, 6 describes this situation aptly, you have planted much but harvested little. You eat but never have enough. You drink but never have your fill. You put on clothes but are not warm. You earn wages, only to put them in a purse with holes in it. Here, the prophet Haggai points out the futility of effort when under a divine curse, emphasizing how hard work and resources yield disappointing results. A particularly troubling sign of being under a curse is the negative impact you have on other successes. For example, you might enter a partnership with someone who is flourishing, but as soon as you get involved, their fortunes begin to decline. Joshua 7 11-12 provides a biblical example, Israel has sinned. They have violated my covenant, which I commanded them to keep. They have taken some of the devoted things. They have stolen, they have lied, they have put them with their own possessions. That is why the Israelites cannot stand against their enemies. They turn their backs and run because they have been made liable to destruction. The sin of Achan brought a curse upon the entire nation of Israel, causing their collective efforts in battle to fail. This shows how an individual's curse can affect an entire community. Let me give you examples and scenarios. Imagine joining a successful company, only to see it start declining after your arrival. Projects fall apart, clients are lost, and revenue dwindles. Colleagues might initially dismiss it as coincidence, but over time, the pattern becomes undeniable. In personal relationships, the curse manifests as a downturn in your partner's life upon your involvement. They may start losing their job, face health issues, or suffer social setbacks, too. Continuing financial struggle despite sufficient income. One of the most telling signs that you might be under a curse is experiencing ongoing financial struggle despite having a seemingly sufficient income. This scenario is characterized by a continuous pattern where, regardless of how much money you earn, it never seems to be enough to cover your needs or save for the future. Instead, the money disappears mysteriously or gets consumed by unexpected expenses. Money disappears without explanation. 
The Bible provides insights into this kind of financial curse. Haggai 1, 6 describes this situation vividly. This verse reflects the frustration of earning a good income, only to see it vanish without any substantial benefit or accumulation of wealth. It's as if your finances are cursed, with money slipping through your fingers like sand. Another clear sign of a financial curse is the recurring nature of unexpected expenses that consume your earnings. For instance, every time you receive a paycheck or a financial windfall, something immediately goes wrong, forcing you to spend that money on unplanned costs. Deuteronomy 28, 29 describes a similar plight, at midday you will grope about like a blind person in the dark. You will be unsuccessful in everything you do. Day after day you will be oppressed and robbed, with no one to rescue you. This passage suggests a state of ongoing frustration and loss, where efforts to build and maintain financial stability are thwarted by unforeseen events. Examples of things that go wrong. 1. Car repairs. Just when you've saved a substantial amount or received a bonus, your car breaks down. The repair costs are significant, eating up all the extra money you had just earned. 2. Home repairs. You might experience a series of home maintenance issues. For example, the roof starts leaking, the HVAC system fails, or plumbing issues arise. These repairs can be costly and recurrent, draining your finances continuously. 3. Medical bills, health issues can also consume your earnings. Even with good insurance, the out-of-pocket costs for medical treatments, medications, or emergency care can be substantial. 4. Family emergencies, relatives or close friends might frequently need financial assistance due to their own emergencies, putting additional strain on your finances. 5. Legal issues, unexpected legal fees due to lawsuits, fines, or disputes can also arise, consuming your income. It's particularly perplexing and frustrating to be highly educated and yet find yourself in a perpetual state of financial struggle. 3. Rejection. One of the most devastating signs that you might be under a curse is experiencing continuous rejection in various areas of your life. This type of curse manifests as a spirit of rejection, which can lead to being misunderstood by family members, unfairly dismissed from work or projects, and being inexplicably disliked by others. Being rejected by family members is particularly painful because family is typically where one expects to find understanding and support. When under a curse of rejection, even those closest to you may fail to understand you or offer the support you need. Psalm 27, 10 reflects this painful reality, though my father and mother forsake me, the Lord will receive me. This verse acknowledges that even familial relationships can falter but it also provides the comfort that God remains a source of acceptance and support. Another clear sign of a curse of rejection is being unfairly sacked from work or dismissed from projects without a reasonable explanation. This can happen even when your performance is good and you meet or exceed expectations. Isaiah 53, 3 describes Jesus as despised and rejected by mankind a man of suffering, and familiar with pain. Like one from whom people hide their faces he was despised, and we held him in low esteem. This verse illustrates the extent of rejection that can be experienced even when one is blameless and righteous, drawing a parallel to those unfairly treated in professional settings. When under a curse of rejection, people may dislike you without any rational reason. This can be confusing and hurtful, as you may not understand why you are being treated with animosity. John 15 18-19 provides insight into this, If the world hates you, 
keep in mind that it hated me first. If you belong to the world, it would love you as its own. As it is, you do not belong to the world, but I have chosen you out of the world. That is why the world hates you. Jesus' words here remind us that rejection can come without cause, especially when one is living in accordance with God's will. Experiencing a pattern of failed relationships can also be a sign of a curse of rejection. If every relationship you enter ends in disappointment, it might be more than just bad luck. 4. Haunted by debt. One of the most troubling signs that you might be under a curse is being perpetually haunted by debt. This situation is marked by an inability to escape the cycle of borrowing, leading to a constant state of financial bondage. Despite your best efforts to manage your finances, you find yourself consistently relying on loans, credit cards, or other forms of borrowing just to make ends meet. Being unable to escape debt often involves a vicious cycle of borrowing to pay off previous debts, leading to ever-increasing financial burdens. Proverbs 22, 7 succinctly states, The rich rule over the poor, and the borrower is slave to the lender. This verse underscores the power imbalance created by debt, where the borrower becomes enslaved to the lender highlighting the oppressive nature of perpetual indebtedness. Symptoms of being haunted by debt. 1. Chronic borrowing, you find yourself consistently needing to borrow money to cover basic expenses, even if your income should theoretically be sufficient. 2. Mounting interest payments, the interest on your debts accumulates faster than you can pay it off making the principal amount seem insurmountable. 3. Living beyond means, despite understanding the importance of living within your means, you feel compelled to spend more than you earn, leading to continuous debt. 5. History of suicide or death in the family. A history of suicides within a family is a profoundly troubling sign that may indicate the presence of a curse. This pattern can lead to pervasive thoughts of suicide among family members, including yourself, even when there is no clear cause such as clinical depression. Instead, it feels like an overwhelming, negative force or energy is at work, driving these destructive thoughts and actions. This action, coupled with rampant, untimely deaths in the family, suggests a deeper spiritual issue. A curse that manifests as a history of suicides and untimely deaths in a family can be deeply rooted in spiritual, generational, or ancestral issues. 6. Persistent unexplainable illness. One of the most troubling signs that you might be under a curse is the presence of a common, incurable sickness or disease that afflicts multiple family members. This situation is marked by a pervasive illness that seems to affect everyone in the family, with no apparent medical explanation or cure. Even when doctors cannot find anything wrong, you still feel unwell, indicating a deeper spiritual issue. Wow, so, it is true that I have been cursed? I am in a huge debt, all the people around me have rejected me. In fact, my fiancé broke up with me after accusing me that I'm the one that caused the problem in his life. There's this chest pain that happens to everyone in my family, it happened to my dad, uncle and my mom. I am struggling financially. What can I do to be free? 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold! The new has come. Jesus has broken every curse on the cross. Our cursed chains are snapped the minute we hand them over to him. We have to do the hard work of turning from our sinful behavior, but in Christ, we are part of a new family, God's family. The power of the cross sets us free from the curse of sin that is death. Christ came for all and all have the opportunity to embrace freedom in Him. If we are in Christ, 
every curse has already been broken. There will always be consequences for sin and disobedience. God is good, all the time. All the time, God is good. A good father disciplines his children. So does our father lovingly guide us, despite the painful onslaught of our bad and disobedient decisions. But we are not held accountable for someone else's sin. Ezekiel 18:20 proclaims, The one who sins is the one who will die. The child will not share the guilt of the parent, nor will the parent share the guilt of the child. The righteousness of the righteous will be credited to them, and the wickedness of the wicked will be charged against them. Jesus is our everything. His saving act was God's plan from the beginning. The Spirit is faithful to nudge and reminds us, daily, we are loved. If you dwell forever in fellowship with the Heavenly Father, it won't be because you somehow managed to avoid the mistakes made by previous generations. It will be because you accepted God's merciful offer of unmerited deliverance and salvation. Love drives out all generational curses. Our earthly families will frustrate and fail us because we are all imperfect. But God has adopted us into his family. Jesus has called us friends, and the living God lives in us. Generational curses have no power over the one true King. You need to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. After this, you will rekindle your relationship with God and study the Word of God more. We are going to fast for three days to break all the curses that has been laid on you and your family with powerful prayer points. Do not worry, I'll join you in prayer from my end. Now, are you ready to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior? Yes, I am. Hallelujah. Repeat after me. Heavenly Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus. I acknowledge that I am a sinner and I repent of my sins. I believe that Jesus Christ is your Son, that he died for my sins, and that you raised him from the dead. Lord Jesus, I invite you into my heart. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. Cleanse me with your precious blood, fill me with your Holy Spirit, and lead me in the way of righteousness. Thank you, Father, for your love and grace. Thank you, Jesus for the gift of salvation. From this day forward, I will follow you and live for you. Help me to grow in faith and to serve you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name, I pray. Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us for it is written, in the book of Colossians 2.13, And you, who were dead in your trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, God made alive together with him, having forgiven us all our trespasses. Leviticus 26, 40-42 says, But if they will confess their sins and the sins of their ancestors their unfaithfulness and their hostility toward me, which made me hostile toward them so that I sent them into the land of their enemies then when their uncircumcised hearts are humbled and they pay for their sin, I will remember my covenant with Jacob and my covenant with Isaac and my covenant with Abraham, and I will remember the land. Isaiah 54, 17 says, no weapon that is fashioned against you shall succeed, and you shall confute every tongue that rises against you in judgment. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord and their vindication from me, declares the Lord. John 8.32 says, And you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. James 5.16 says, Therefore confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. 1 John 1, 9 says, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I proclaim that Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed is everyone who is hung on a tree. Galatians 3.13 In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I now bring the fullness of his cross, death, blood, and sacrifice, his resurrection, life and empty tomb, his authority, rule, and dominion.
I bring judgment from the throne of Jesus Christ against every foul power, witchcraft, black art, and curse. I bring Jesus Christ cursed for me against all curses that have been raised against me, written, spoken, unspoken, or transferred to me. I bring the blood sacrifice of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, his blood shed upon the cross, against all blood sacrifices and rituals, and their every claim against me in the name of Jesus, I declare every legal hold and every legal ground of the enemy broken, disarmed, and destroyed. Satan has no hold over me now through curses or occult practices, through sacrifices and ritual of any kind. Through the blood of Jesus Christ, I am free. Thank you, Jesus, for setting me free. I order these curses and claims utterly disarmed and dismantled now, through the power of the blood of Jesus Christ, and in his name. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command all demonic spirits that have gained access to me through curses and rituals cut off and banished from me and my household, in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus, I ask you to send your angels now to completely disarm all curses and black arts from me. Disarm their every device and render them destroyed. I ask your angels to remove all foul spirits involved in these curses and black arts and bind them to your feet for judgment. I bring Jesus Christ, the Son of God, sacrificed for me, against all ritual sacrifices and their every claim against me. I bring the dedication of Jesus Christ for me in death upon the cross against all ritual dedications. In the name and by the blood of Jesus Christ, I break the power and hold of every curse that has come to me through ritual or ritual sacrifice. In the name, and by the blood of Jesus Christ, I break the power and hold of every curse that has come to me through transfer by another human being. In the name, and by the blood of Jesus Christ, I break the power and hold of every curse that has come to me through words spoken. In the name, and by the blood of Jesus Christ, I break the power and hold of every curse that has come to me through occult practices. I now claim every spiritual blessing that my Heavenly Father has given to me in Christ Jesus. Ephesians 1, 3 I claim those blessings right here in the very place of all cursing, by the authority and power of the Lord Jesus Christ, and in His name. Jesus, may these things be fully accomplished now through Your mighty name. I give You thanks and honor and praise. All of this I pray by the authority and in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, who came in the flesh. My name is Gloria, and my story is one of darkness turned into light by the grace and power of Jesus Christ. Two years ago, my life was a series of endless misfortunes. I lost my mother, my relationship fell apart. I lost multiple jobs, and my friends deserted me. Even my financial stability was shattered, all due to curses that had been placed upon me. I was in a place of deep despair, feeling hopeless and completely lost. In the midst of my suffering, I met a man, I call him my dear father. He introduced me to the love and salvation of Jesus Christ. At first, I was skeptical, but as I started to read the Bible and pray, I felt a glimmer of hope. One night, I prayed fervently, confessing my sins and asking Jesus to come into my heart and break every curse over my life. I accepted him as my Lord and Savior, and that moment marked the beginning of a profound transformation. Gradually, I began to see changes. The heavy burden I carried started to lift. My health improved, and I felt a new sense of peace and joy. Miraculously, doors began to open. I found a job, then another, and within a year, I was able to start my own small company. My relationships were restored, and I made new friends who truly cared about me. The love and acceptance I received were overwhelming. Just yesterday, I married the love of my life, a kind and godly man who supports and loves me deeply. I stand here today, two years later, blessed beyond measure. My life is a testament to the redeeming power of Jesus Christ. The curses that once plagued me are gone, replaced by blessings and a bright future. To anyone hearing my story, 
I want you to know that no matter how dark your situation may seem, Jesus is the answer. He can break every curse, heal every wound, and restore what has been lost. Accept him into your life, and experience the transformative power of his love and grace. He is the only solution to our problems, and with him, all things are possible.